Bom dia, good morning, guys. And um, to, for today, I was planning to cover kind of two topics. And the first one is really extension of what we were talking two days back about network systems and how the resilience concept can be extended to uh, um, networks. In, in, in this kind of addition, I am going to address only the small modification that can be introduced by consideration of the multiple hazards. Uh, so, unfortunately, we will have uneven distribution of time. This is going to be much shorter, and then the talk on the hydropower and use of resilience in the hydropower safety will be longer. So, my understanding is we'll make a break and picture and everything else after that shorter part, and then continue with the second one. Uh, I, I simply, it was not easy for me to divide exactly exactly in time. So, so to kind of quickly remind you, we were talking about interdependent infrastructure in the form of uh, in the form of the multi-layer multi -layer system, if you remember, where the various infrastructure components can be considered in the form of different layers, like information, the, the uh, water, roads, energy, and so on. Um, within each of the layers, uh, we were considering we were considering the kind of network structure where the uh, infrastructure is represented a set of nodes and edges which are kind of being uh, connected. Each of them uh, basically taking only two possible states, functional and non-functional. And um, the, the, the set of different um, failure modes uh, were identified as the consequence of representing the system structure in that network form. So we had a node-to-node -node dependence, node-to-edge, path, uh, cluster, and so on. So you remember I kind of covered that and we were talking about that. Uh, in this process, we also analyzed um, how the for example, various repair strategies or recovery strategies may affect the system resilience. And then the calculation was uh, calculation and the idea of resilience was implemented in this context. Um, uh, just to kind of remind you, we continue, and in this example, I am going to show uh, that, you know, the difference between different recovery strategies, this is very open for, you know, various situations. and. Additional strategies can be, you know, developed or some of them taken out. Like idea of repairing first the part of the network that fails first, or uh, repairing first the last failing, you know, part, or um, impairing, uh, uh, repairing the first the main uh, components or nodes in the system that are affecting the most edges. Uh, repairing obviously dependent elements and so on. So you can come up basically on your understanding and knowledge of how the system uh, structure works, you can come up with various strategies and that can be invest investigated through the, uh, through the resilience calculation. So we were talking about this kind of resilience curve, we were talking about uh, um, the value of resilience being the area under the curve where uh, this part this part will be something and that's the consequence of approaching the problem in advance or uh, basically building the adaptive capacity in advance and this area or the size of this area and the resilience is affected by our willingness to invest into resources to recover so how fast, how much money you want to put, how many people you want to put, and so on. But basically, the area under the curve will be shaping and determining the value of resilience. The calculation was done in the network forum in a way that we were finding out this particular point, which is defining the <coughs> minimum level of performance, and it's also the function of how fast the system how fast the system loses performance. Uh, we were that was called the robustness. Uh, we were calculating the uh, resourcefulness as basically uh, the slope or how fast we are investing resources into recovery. And uh, the rapidity 
as the total time that's required for the system to move from the non-failure state back into through the failure and response, uh, possibly to the same level of performance. And that was, so these three were now the functions of the obviously number of nodes, the types of dependencies, um, edges, uh, and the recovery, recovery strategies. The calculation is done, if you remember, by simply integrating this area under the performance curve and then adding this uh, uh, or multiplying these values for various layers as well as for uh, various uh, type of impacts. Okay, so everything was relatively straightforward when we consider the single, uh, single kind of hazard. You have, the, you have the period of system disturbance and the system loss of performance, we have a period of the performance recovery, we have the time required for that, we have decisions which are affecting the robustness and decisions which are affecting how long it's going to take. The moment when you consider multiple hazards, the situation becomes a little bit more complex and that's the simple extension that I want to cover only today. And the main reason is that you may end up in a various situations, both in time and space. Uh, if you look at the time, this is what may happen. We may have a situation that, you know, the additional hazard may be affecting the system when the system already recovered from the previous one. What are the multiple hazard situations? Multiple hazard situations are, let's say, combined impacts of various natural phenomena. Uh, very common is the wind and fl uh, flood. Uh, hurricane hits and first the power of wind creates the damage and usually it's followed with a heavy rainfall that, that inundates some area and adds to the damage. Um, so in the case of, uh, in the case of other, uh, other examples will be at least in Canada, the, the people who are working in earthquake uh, hazards we're talking about usually earthquake affecting the, affecting the area, and then fire that follows after the earthquake being the main source of, main source of damage, especially, especially in urban areas, because the earthquake destroys the communication paths, um, starts the fires by breaking the gas lines and things like that, and the fire has a much more destructive power because the access is being affected by the consequences of the first one. So, so these are the kind of types of um, multiple hazards that can follow each other. So the first one is uh, the situation where the resilience is relatively simple than the addition of the two, uh, addition of the two areas. You're treating them as kind of independent. Um, they are not affecting each other because the recovery from the first hazard is already completed before the second one, because, uh, before the second one comes. So by adding these two, you will find the total resilience of the system too. The second situation uh, from the temporal point of view is that the second or the <coughs> next hazard <coughs> is occurring before the system is recovered from the first one. So you have a situation that the you know, system lost the performance and starting to recover, another hazard hits, and now this hazard is actually hitting the system not from the original you know, state of the performance, but from the performance which is below that state and usually brings the further down the ability of the system to perform. So in this particular case, we have now the overlap of the areas and the resilience needs to take, the calculation of resilience needs to take that into consideration. So we have to determine uh, the time of this hazard and also the level of performance uh, that is in the system, or the, the level of performance of the system when the second hazard, uh, when the second hazard occurs. And the resilience will be then the total area under these two, under these two curves. And the third situation in time is um, 
coincidence between two different hazards. So the hazards are happening in the same time. And what you may end up with is that the performance um, or the consequences, the system performance will be affected by the joint impact that these two hazards are producing. So now this particular curve is not the uh, simple curve like we were saying, let's say, the damage from the inundation, but it's a damage from the inundation plus the damage from the wind that was occurring at the same time. And so, so, so you need to have a model that will be able to find the impacts from these hazards combined. So that is the issue, uh, the issue with time. Uh, the calculation is just adjusted to actually do that. And graphically, what you know, I was saying is represented here. You may have a situation so the you know, coincidence in the same duration. You may have a starting point the same and different durations. We may have a situation like in a first graph where one is already recover system recovered from one before the other starts. And then we have a situation where, you know, at different times the other one uh, may, be, may be occurring. So that's only taking into consideration time. However, when you have a multiple hazards, you will have actually impacts in space at the different locations. So we need to consider also uh, the space in modifying, modifying now this relationship. And graphically, that's kind of illustrated here. You may have a full kind of coincidence where the same area is affected by both hazards. You may have an overlap uh, between two different areas. You may have one area being within uh, the other area, and you may have a situation that they are hitting two different areas which are not connected. So, so you see why the kind of complications are starting now to be introduced with the multiple hazards, because we are expanding now to consideration in time and space, and that needs to go into our calculation or integration of the performance, performance curves. So how we did that, we actually created the kind of cube that gives you the kind of relation between time, space, and damage or the resilience, which is the consequence of the consequence of the of the impact. This is now becoming much more complex uh, a problem for kind of mathematical consideration and the main reason is that uh, this uh, difference in space and time um, is, not, um, is not kind of uh, uh, deterministic. It's not known kind of in advance. It will be, or it requires, it requires kind of more probabilistic treatment through replacing the system performance values with the kind of expected value of the system performance. And this is what we uh, kind of have done, developed the calculation, and this is illustrated with the following case study. Okay, did you got the kind of main idea? So we're expanding this idea of the multiple layers, interactions between the nodes and edges within different multiple layers, with now consideration of the potential combinations between multiple hazards in time and space. That's the main kind of simplifi simplified message. And you will see here how that kind of works. Uh, what we have done in this particular case study, we consider the, this is the city of Toronto, and uh, we looked into a kind of energy, uh, energy uh, supply and various elements of the energy supply. The main reason for kind of selecting this as a case study was that this information is available uh, uh, directly and we didn't depend on, on, the, on the different sources of information. So you have a system, uh, sorry, you have a system of the electricity supply which is including the transmission lines as well as the electric substations of different kind of power 
and the power lines of different kind of capacity. We have a gas, uh, uh, which includes the compressor stations and meter stations and obviously pipes. And we have a oil uh, transport through pumping station and meter stations uh, into, the, into the city. So for the greater Toronto area, this is what we call the GTA. The networks are represented, the colors are showing different levels. And what we wanted to do is uh, we used one historical uh, situation that was a Hurricane Andrew, uh, which is a um, really design storm for that, our particular region. Um, and uh, the damage in the region was experienced uh, from the wind that the hurricane imposed, as well as the flooding that followed afterwards. So we made a couple of, uh, uh, we utilized the kind of historical data, historical event to kind of show how this um, uh, works. We utilized the real network of uh, energy supplies of energy to the city and <coughs> the way how we consider different hazards was to look at the direction of the movement of wind. The sh different shades of orange are showing the wind intensity and the blue areas are identifying uh, the source of the second hazard or the inundation that was a uh, consequence of the flooding that followed the hurricane. Uh, so the, the assumptions were made that the wind impact is occurring in this kind of sheets in a way of the same, uh, the same intensity or the same wind speed and the damage is caused within this whole sheet and covers the area, the area of the city uh, with the equal distribution. That may not be exactly, you know, the case, but because the wind will not be kind of, you know, doing in this way, uh, uh, but I think it's a good approximation, a good approximation of the possible impact. Then we uh, were trying to measure, obviously the focus was on the, Im on the impact on the on this energy infrastructure, but we try to measure the impact by the affected population. So the, the graph here is showing in a different shades of brown color the uh, density of the population and you know what we were able to kind of see is now when we put a, a, a different hazards into the place, what will be the population affected? And that kind of helped us in calculating, um, in calculating the resilience to the system. So I think yesterday we had a discussion about choice of, choice of impacts. Here we you know, decided to make the uh, impact choice uh, basically the number of people that will be affected, basically not having the energy, uh, energy provided to them. Um, it's one of the kind of indicators selected and it was relatively straightforward to obtain this information because census um, data is available publicly in Canada. You can buy these units are called dissemination units. By these spatial units you can find exactly what is the population in each of the, in each of the units. So now when you implement uh, this kind of idea and the calculation, uh, um, uh, the calculation that's modified in this kind of probabilistic form taking into consideration time and space, you, uh, we were able to generate, I'm sorry, the, the, the resolution is not the best. Uh, the lines are now in different colors. <laughs> the lines, energy lines are in different colors actually, uh, uh, identifying the level of uh, the damage. And what you realize now we are able to do is because we have a time and space uh, represented for each of these different strategies for adaptation, we are able to kind of compare, uh, compare the impact through uh, the resilience. So like a first line shows for different time moments, you know, what is the uh, response of the system under the flood with one strategy, uh, strategy one repairing the first damaged uh, uh, component uh, at particular time moment. Uh, 
And you can actually inquire, or you can do and generate these graphs for any possible idea that you would like to explore in adaptation strategies. So what uh, the calculation allows you now is to look at your network and basically observe the level of damage that's, uh, that's occurring in the network. You can look at different strategies. You can look at, so basically all the combinations that I was talking about in time and space, yeah? Um, <coughs> you, for the selected, uh, selected combination, you do the calculation of the resilience the same way as the area under, and you're now able to kind of show for the various uh, recovery strategies what will be the, let's say, impact on the electric transmission or the, what will be the impact on the gas transmission. Um, you can combine them into the total, uh, into the total uh, impact or the resilience of the system. Um, <coughs> that was directly the impact on the kind of infrastructure. Uh, I also mentioned that we utilized the impact on the people or the consequences of the failing infrastructure, and that was done basically just now overlaying the, overlaying the areas that are being affected again for various recovering strategies for various time moments. Um, just showing the population as the measure of the uh, impacted, or as the measure of the impact, and directly, basically now converting the value or the resilience of the infrastructure on the those who may be depending depending on that infrastructure. So the primary result is this. Uh, the, the, the shades of, or the colors that are now captured um, uh, through the network of oil, energy, and gas supply, and the consequences on the people are uh, captured here. And again, you can kind of uh, do the calculation now through the use of the information of the impacted people and find out now the resilience of people to the failure of the infrastructure. And that's it. <laughs> that's all what I wanted to kind of add to, you know, the previous um, idea, uh, just to kind of illustrate that, you know, when we move from the single hazard and uh, multiple layer networks, the situation becomes more complex. What I am now working on with the uh, two uh, postdocs is generalization of this theory. So. I'm interested to see how can we have a model that will be uh, available to capture uh, N hazards and N uh, or M, sorry, uh, uh, different types of infrastructure. So if we have a generalized uh, multi-hazard model or resilience model, then maybe that type of model can be easily applied for any situation that you have the multiple hazards affecting uh, a different type of infrastructure. Um, it, it is not, it's not easy because the generalization requires consideration of that cube that I was showing and all the possible kind of combinations which are now in a probabilistic form of the expected values. Um, and second one is that we need to take into consideration all the possible um, interdependencies, and there are five types of interdependencies, you know, the node, no node, node to edge, node to path, to, uh, you know, cluster, and so on. So, so in, in a general model, all of them should be present, and obviously through the kind of case study application, you know, you will be using those that are corresponding to your. Hopefully we will succeed, <laughs> we will see. Uh, we are very close actually to finishing this research and we're just right now testing, uh, testing the mathematics that we developed. You guys have any questions? Yeah? Mm -hmm. supposed to be yeah. Okay, again, 
uh, supposed to be, they are, these the, the sub-districts are not sub-basins. No, no. Oh, that, no, that's no. the point. No. What's the, so my question is, what, what are the criteria to split then in so special yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, scales? And what are also the criteria to split in what time discretization time steps? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's a good, especially in the generalized model, you actually need to start with answering this exact question to determine you know, the time step and determine the kind of area. And that's what is kind of being done here. In this, in this particular case, in this particular case, the time was day. Um, and the reason was that the hurricane and the impact of hurricane was occurring over the period of, I think, 11 days. So we had and considered three weeks, you know, to cover the period before, during, and kind of after. Um, in the choice will be very much the function of the type of hazard, uh, type of hazard you are experiencing. In the case of, uh, in the case of earthquake, for example, that's a momentary kind of hazard, and and uh, you know, and the recovery can be in weeks or even months and so on. So every the the type of hazard will determine the time step. The, the choice of the spatial uh, uh, scale is very much the function of what type of impact you are trying to observe. In this case, we decided to, because we are looking into energy network, and we wanted to see how the failure of that network is going to affect people. Okay? And the information about the population was available in this form. This is so-called a dissemination unit, which is, a, in our case, uh, I think it's a unit of space with the same density of population. So, so let's say in the downtown, they are very, very small, and uh, towards the outskirts, you see they become bigger. The, 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 so they have the same density. That's what the dissemination unit is, and our statistics Federal Statistic Department provide the population for these units. So this is what determined our spatial unit. If we decided, let's say, to use the business instead of people, then spatial units will be completely different. You will be actually having the locations of the business that depends on the gas supply, electricity supply, and so on. So again, the choice is related to the choice of impact that you would like to have. Okay. And this is why I was saying now our development of the generalized, generalized theory is, is it, it, it's, it's difficult because it has to allow any possible impact, any possible combination of hazards to be, uh, to uh, be modeled. I understood that it's very attractive because the user can <coughs> format their own uh, uh, scales to their yes. own objectives. That's a yeah. very, very, very yeah. important point. Uh, but in terms of, of model hydrology, uh, water uh, extremes like floods or even droughts, is supposed that these sensitarian uh, uh, scales should oh, be okay. adjusted to the some sub basin or yes. small uh, yeah. uh, hydrological watershed, watershed response kind of units part. like yeah. the distributed. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank we you. actually tested, I don't have the results, we, we, we also tested the idea of the earthquake and flood. Um, and, and also used the, used the city of Toronto. And in that particular case, <coughs> the focus was on the watershed. So we use the Don River watershed and the boundaries of the watershed because the consequences of the earthquake are kind of everywhere happening in the same time. Uh, and we wanted to see where the two hazards overlay. And uh, there is a main highway going on. The highway get partially inundated in some areas, partially damaged from the earthquake. And the boundaries, the spatial boundaries, basically where only the part of the, that watershed is somewhere here and a very small kind of watershed area around that river. So the spatial is, is again related to the type of, type of hazard. Any other questions, guys? So in Brazil, more than 40,000 hot spots are yeah. raised from areas from landslides, droughts, flash floods, and floods. Yeah. But all of them are catching. <coughs> Okay, yeah. So that is a, yeah. a powerful uh, uh, tool that they have to You can easily, yeah, yeah, you can use for different, yeah.
Ja. Okay. <clears throat> so that's, that's it. This is kind of finishing my presentation. Some of this work, yes, these two papers are presenting the both in a very highly regarded uh, journal of risk analysis. Um, and for those of you who may be kind of interested, um, I, can, I can provide the copies or you can get them uh, from my website. Um, and with the same group, I'm working on this general theory. Um, and that's not going to be published soon, probably mid next year. <laughs> um, we are just finishing the work. Any other questions? Yeah, if you want, I can actually give you during the break. I have them. I have them on my USB. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is now. I wanted to move into another lecture. You wanna make now the picture and break and so on, and then we can. The other lecture will be a little bit longer than you know the time for this, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, let me try to, to uh, make brainstorm. Okay, I, I know about the time, uh, but it's, it's very important. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Slobodan, could you please uh, come back to the, uh, well, this was in the, the other, in the more the theoretical approach, uh -huh, uh -huh. this one, uh, when you, you yeah, combine, yeah. this one, yeah. when you combine. So we have made a very uh, slowly a uh, uh, tip to, to Gabriela, to Felipe, but to everyone. Uh, uh, try to, to uh, put in my, in my figures, uh, in my words. Uh, <clears throat> related to water, so, uh, uh, imagine you are working with two kind of hazards, floods and droughts. So uh, you are simulating a hydrological model in, in a continuous way. So sometimes you have a flood, sometimes you have a drought, and also you know the boundary, con the, 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 the thresholds for higher floods and the threshold for uh, very big droughts. When you uh, overpass this threshold, you are in the red zones. So uh, the point is, how yeah. can we evaluate a new yeah. axis yeah. Yeah. that yeah. when your water level is going higher yeah. or yeah. even yeah. lower, yeah. 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 this new point. variable is going to be a, a changing in the same way. The, for instance, could be these are floods, or floods, or, so, sorry, a drought, uh, followed with a, for a flood. Yeah, but that's a very actually good question. <laughs> you see, I was always thinking it's simple. Uh, simple in a way that we will have, you know, kind of drought finishing and experiencing the consequences and then possibly then followed by the, but, I think it's very realistic, so this will be the scheme that I had in my mind, but it can be very realistic that actually situation is like this, or more, so that the consequences of, let's say, long-term drought are actually extending in time, even if the drought is, if the drought is gone, so that floods can come into the system and continue adding to the, so, so it's more happening in this form. The, the way, the, okay, so the way how this can be captured, you need to have the system performance measured for both, you know, for both hazards measured in a system way, I, uh, in, the same, in the same units. Um, let's say loss of crop production or uh, loss of income or damage, um, damage in reals in economic units, where this first part will be derived will be derived from um, the consequences of the drought, and the second part will be derived as a consequence, a consequence of flooding. But it must be, but yeah, but must be in the same units. Must be in the same units because you are capturing resilience, resilience of the combined, of the combined event. That's actually pretty good. I think it's a very good example. We don't have something like that. <laughs> Maybe we, we can apply, we can try to apply in Brazil. Yeah, to see this, you know, how, how for example, this kind of combination of the droughts and floods uh, may, be, may be affecting the resilience. <coughs> 
for a, a, an, an initiative. It's that after you can add in a same uh, uh, axis, axis mm -hmm. the effects of, of different hazards growing and following your, your methodology, that is also possible to use this methodology and as a mid step before insurance mechanisms. Because mm -hmm. when you're, you are working with insurance, you need a loss function related to yeah. economic losses yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah, instead of that, actually, I would offer insurance people the value of resilience. Yes. The value of resilience as a consequence of the combined situation so that they actually get some measure. Um, I know that they will be interested in, you know, dollar or, <laughs> you know, real in the kind of material damage, but I think that what this is offering, it's offering us opportunity to calculate that resilience of the system. Mm -hmm. So that will have big consequence of maybe physical conditions, you know, mm -hmm. how sensitive is the area to drought, to flood, yes. or maybe the consequence of the state of the exposure, you know, how much of the, or how many properties, uh, what type of crop, <laughs> Um, is exposed and things like uh, that. So, so I would, I would, I would. I mean, that's why I'm developing this yeah. to kind of provide this additional mesh. And the third and the last eh, is that uh, going uh, following this approach, uh, you, you mentioned losses in damages in economic yeah. units, but sometimes we can use even simpler uh, or, or even f uh, first uh, uh, just. A, a ready a, a curves, for instance, duration curves, one mm -hmm. group of us is working with the, the value of mm -hmm. the duration curves in the extremes, mm -hmm. so we can decouple what is the meaning from this part of the duration curve in terms of ecosystem services mm -hmm. valuation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, what is the value of a big flat yeah. in terms of yeah. a, a, a kind of... So, what you're talking about is actually choice mm -hmm. of what are you going to put on this yes. vertical but axis. There, is, there are several opportunities. Various for opportunities. That is, that's, that's I, agree. I agree. Okay. So, yeah. it's only to, to illustrate yeah. the, the, the capabilities of... The but it's really good idea of looking, the, uh, for example, floods and droughts together. Yes. Yeah, that's a really inter interesting idea, and, uh, and it has a value because of this potential overlap. It may be that, you know, in some situations you will be facing this, that the drought is kind of taken care of before the flood hits. But I think because the consequences of the droughts are probably long term, yeah, uh, that, that, that this situation will be, will be much more common. <laughs> This is like the example of millennium drought in Australia. Yeah, it's what the very happens. long, yeah, yeah very, 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 long, very drought, long drought, and then yeah. a lot of floods. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 uh, and, yeah. And also, and also the situation. But you stand up after uh, you know, you're speaking, uh, and the situation. That's the normal question is: What is better to make to, to have a contract, one contract for? flat insurance, yeah. another contract for drought insurance, so you're going to pay two kind of premium, or even to have an, a multi-hazard contract that perhaps probably the premium yeah. is going to be lower. Yeah. And, and that is the, the possibility that's to discuss. A, that to that be, would be pretty interesting discussion with the insurance industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. If uh, so, we are done with this. Do you want to make a picture and whatever and break? And